Hey guys, this is Alex Pierce from LightsailVR.com. In this video, we're going to be talking about shooting HDRIs. We're going to be using the Canon R5C. It's the same as the Canon R5 in terms of photos. And in th this case, I'm using the TT Artisan's fisheye lens. It's a 7.5 millimeter lens. I'm going to be showing you all about the settings you need to set your camera up to. We'll talk a little bit about shooting with a nodal ninja, but even if you don't have a nodal ninja or you have a different camera, a lot of the same techniques will apply. So this video still might be helpful for you if you don't have the same exact gear. So I'm not going to get into what is an HDRI, but essentially the process for this, no matter what camera you're using, no matter what you have, no matter what lens is basically the same. You're going to be shooting several different brackets of exposure and different views until you cover the full sphere of the world. With this setup, you can probably do it in as little as four. I always do six, one north, east, south, west, up and down. And then I typically also move the tripod and shoot clean plates for the bottom area. Although you don't have to, you can also paint those out in Affinity Photo or Photoshop. If you do have a Nodal Ninja, you can set it up something like this. Once you have your camera on your Nodal Ninja, you can find the Nodal Point. I will get into that into another video or you can look it up online. But essentially, you're trying to make the Nodal Point of the camera be right in the middle of your tripod. So that when you rotate around, it's going to rotate around the Nodal Point. With still photos, it's actually pretty forgiving. As long as you're pretty close to the nodal point and you shoot with a lot of overlap, then you should be able to stitch it okay. Video is quite different. Uh, with video, I highly recommend being as precise as possible if you're gonna shoot nodally, but stills is a lot more forgiving. And the most important thing is to just go out and start shooting now because you're gonna learn a lot more when you're doing it for yourself. Okay, let's jump into some of the settings on the camera. So the first thing is, of course, you wanna make sure that you turn on your camera in photo mode. You can do that by clicking on here. If you're on the R5C, it, that's how it works. If you're in the R5, it's a little bit different. And then one of the first things I wanna make sure we talk about is you have to be in manual mode. If these other modes, even programmed automatic, might give you problems when you get into stitching. Stitching software really likes it to be manual. So click on manual. And then if, if it's not already set this way, make sure to take off auto ISO, because again, that can cause some issues later. So we're going to manually set the exposure. And in general, before you shoot your HDRI, you're going to set your exposure to be basically properly exposed. And that can mean different things under different circumstances, but again, that's sort of out of the scope of this particular tutorial. So now that we're in manual mode, um, before we jump into the settings, I also want to mention real quick, um, on this particular lens, and with a lot of lenses, I don't recommend shooting wide open. So for instance, you could potentially shoot uh, at an f2, and you're probably gonna run into issues if you do that. So I would say on this particular lens, f4 to f5, 6 is probably a good place to be. So now let's just go through the whole menu setup. The first thing I wanna say though is, what I like to do, and this is true on any camera system, is I like to set up my own custom menu. And so for instance, under my custom menu here, you can see I have exposure compensation, number of bracketed shots, image quality, white balance, format card. These are all things we're going to talk about throughout uh, the menu settings here. But if you set up your menu to do something like this, then what you can do is just click on exposure compensation and choose it and then continue and do all that sort of stuff. So I'm going to undo that for now. And let's just go through the menu settings. So, so starting on one, um, image quality. Image quality, I recommend when you're just getting started out to shoot RAW and JPEG, and you can decide later if you want to just shoot one or the other. I typically just shoot RAW these days, but uh, I also have a very fast machine. If you have a slower machine, processing the RAW can be very difficult. So if you have JPEG and RAW, you have the best of both worlds. If you don't need them, you can always delete them later. But once you've shot, you're stuck with what you got. So RAW and JPEG, good way to go. Throughout the menu, um, you know, crop should be at full. And a lot of these menu items can just be left at their default. Basically, you don't want any weird uh, color things or, or any sort of creative looks on the, the images themselves. Exposure compensation, this is basically the main thing you need to, to know. You click on this, then you use this top button here to choose how far apart your exposures are. So for instance, here it is one stop up and one stop down, excuse me, right here it is. So in this case, I have seven photos. 
It's going to shoot one full stop overexposed, at two overexposed, at three overexposed, and then negative one, negative two, negative three. And you're going to have to experiment uh, and do some of your own tests here to figure out what's going to make the most sense. But I think one is, is general rule of thumb, I think, for just starting out, just, just start there and see where that goes. If you're shooting to capture the full power of the sun, you have to kind of do things differently anyway, but you might want to spread out those exposures as far as you can. And the downside of this, because you might think, well, why don't I just always shoot that way, is that it's going to be harder to blend these exposures in post. The opposite is true for, for closer. Well, they'll blend very nicely, but there's not a lot of uh, dynamic range if you shoot really tight together. So again, feel free to experiment. If you're not sure in a specific, particular setting, just shoot it several different ways and find out when you get into post. Um, this is also very important. You have to press set for this to take. It's very, it's very easy just to get out of here and think it's, it's working. And if I do that, if I just press the shutter button without pressing set, um, you, want, you might not know if it's doing it or not. And the way you can tell is down here, right now it's not set. You can see there's one tick mark here. If I press the shutter button, it's only going to take one photo. So if I go back to the menu and I click on here and I do this and I press set, and now when I get out of it, you can see we have several ticks here. And depending on how many pictures you've chosen, there will be that number down here. And now if I take a picture, it's going to take seven pictures instead of one. Right now, this camera is not taking a photo. If I try to press the shutter button, nothing happens. And this is a common thing with most cameras. In this case, I'm using a custom lens here. It's not a Canon lens. And so to get around it, what I need to do, do is go into the menu settings. And on this particular camera, it's going to be over here, the very end here. And there's this one here, release shutter without lens. So right now this is turned off. I need to enable that. And now when I go here and I press the shutter button, you'll see it takes seven photos. And this is a good time to talk about stability. So you, while it's taking these photos, especially if it's taking longer exposures, any sort of jitter is going to cause problems. So there's different ways you can get around that. You can try to shoot at higher shutter speeds. You can also use a remote to trigger this. And you can also trigger this to come on a timer. So we'll look at how to do that here in a little bit. So let's see, let's just keep going here. Um, you want to make sure you set a, a specific white balance. Um, and you can do that by clicking here and setting the Kelvin here. You can use some of these other ones, but definitely do not use auto. You want to use something that's fixed because the stitching software will get mad at you if you do not. So I'm going to set this to 55 for now and we'll continue going through here. The shutter mode, if you could use electronic, I would recommend that because the sensor doesn't move in electronic, but when you go to shoot bracketed exposures, it won't work. So the best option, I think, is electronic first curtain, which will at least minimize some of the shake. So here we have bracketed auto cancel. That is by default on. You can leave that on. Bracketed sequence, this chooses how it shoots. Uh, the default is it shoots the correct exposure first, then it shoots the, the underexposed images, then it shoots the overexposed images, and it doesn't really matter which one you do, just keep it consistent. I like the default because the first picture I shoot I can see looks correct, and when I'm sorting them later it works well for me that way, but again, up to you. Number of bracketed shots, you can click on this and change this to what you want. I recommend just using the max number that you can, which in this case is seven, because you can always throw away photos if you don't need them. And I like having the most data as I can. And now we're back to my custom menu. To configure a menu, you can go to the very last one, the star here, go add to my menu and press OK. And then you can select items to register. And then you can go through and choose anything that you want. Click OK and now you'll have a custom menu that's just for you right here. So I already have what I need in this menu here. So again, when I turn off or turn back on the camera, I can just go to this custom menu and I can double check that my number of shots is seven. I can check that I'm in raw. I can check that the white balance is good and I can click on exposure compensation and set that to what I want. To shoot with the timer, what you can do is go to the quick button on the touch screen, 
And then if you scroll down here to the drive menu or drive mode, this is where you can change the mode to timer. And you can set this to two. So if I click on this, after two seconds, it will take the photos. You can also set the self timer to be 10 seconds by going to the drive mode and that's two seconds and this one is 10 seconds. The other thing I recommend is setting up the manual focus peaking. Turn that on and you can do that and that will help you set your focus. Focus is very important when you're shooting HDRIs. Another quick tip is if you start to shoot and you don't want to keep that so you accidentally bump it, it's a good idea to put your hand in front so later on when you're going through the photos you'll recognize that you did not mean to take that photo. And it'll make your life a little bit easier when you go to sort your photos. Okay, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments, and I'll see you guys in the next video.